Hello and welcome to Big Old Games Unboxing Video of the new Magic the Gathering Kaladesh Deck Builders Toolkit. My name is Simon, I'll be doing the unboxing today. So what I'm going to do is open this up and show you what you get inside. So I'm going to assume you're watching this because you're a relatively new player to Magic, so welcome to Magic. I hope you enjoy your stay. You'll be here for a while. Um, so this is the new Deck Builders tool set for the latest set, which is Kaladesh, and it's a very fun, colourful, exciting set, which I like. So. I'll just show you what you get in here. This is not going to be an in-depth guide on how to do things like deck building and stuff like that. Uh, what it is is just it gives you an idea of what you get inside the box and lets you know sort of why you should buy one. So we've got a nice little uh, intro piece here from uh, Mark Rosewater, who's the Magic Head designer. He's a very public figure for Wizards. If you're interested at all in the design of Magic, he he is a very active blogger. He writes articles. He does his um, Ask Marrow. Um, you can ask him questions on Tumblr. He does podcasts. He does everything. So if you're curious about any of the world of magic, Mark Rosewater is your man. And this is just a nice little intro explaining how to get into playing magic, all the different social media ways you can get in touch with them. Uh, dailymtg.com is a really good place for articles and of course playing in your local community because that's the best part of playing in Magic and then onto the big competitive scenes if that's the way you want to go don't have to if you don't want to and the stories of Magic because there's such a world of Magic um, and as always our story is your story and a big thank you so yeah, so this is a cool little intro, Just it's just a nice little touch, it lets you feel really welcomed into the world of magic I feel, and I really like that they've added that in there. So, let's actually have a look inside. So first of all, outside you get this really cool storage box, they are very useful, don't throw them away. It's a really good way for storing magic collections, storing decks and stuff like that. It folds up at the front and folds up and over. It's fairly good cardboard, so it'll last you quite a while as well, so as long as you're good to it, it'll do you well for a while for storing collections. That's kind of the point of the deck builders. So you get in here, four boosters, so you get two Kaladesh, which is the latest set, and then Shadows over Innistrad and Eldritch Moon, which was the previous block. So Shadows in Innistrad set and the Eldritch Moon set formed the Shadows over Innistrad block. Kaladesh is the first set in the Kaladesh block, followed by Aether Revolt, which as of filming will be out in January. So this is a good start into what they call the standard format, which is the most recent blocks and sets. Um, so that is a great start into that, because you're getting cards that are very recent, very, um, very useful, very useful. You also get in here a quick reference card. Now these are quite prolific, you get them in a lot of the different stuff. They're very useful to keep on hand if you're playing, so it explains some of the key basics of the game. So, casting spells um, in detail, and then you also have the setup, how to win, and then the anatomy of a turn, and that's very useful to keep next to you if you're brand new playing, just getting started. Just keep that by your side so you can reference it if you need to. So, the reference guide, keep hold of those if you are new and just starting. So you get a fold-out sheet in here, which explains, once he folds it out, he says, the world of magic. And it's a big world. But it's happily and neatly divided into five colours. So you have white, blue, black, red, green, or Wooberg as it's called. So W-U-B-R-G are the single letter versions. The reason blue is a U is because B is already taken by black and L is already taken by black and they go with U because if you called it A, B L A, A being the third layer, if they call it A, A is also what an artifact is called. So U just made the most sense, so W U B R G. There you go, a little bit of information for you. Sorry. And there's the colour wheel and it's just uh, two keywords which are the focus of each of the colours, so figure out which one best suits your playstyle and then focus on those, and don't forget you can combine colours. And then it goes through here, how to build a deck. So first of all, sort your cards, very useful, and try to always keep them sorted, because eventually you'll end up like me with boxes and boxes of cards, you've no idea where the one that you really, really want is. Uh, find key cards you want to build around, explore your options, so think of different ways you can achieve the goals you're after. Focus your deck, so refine it down, so you've gotten yourself a big wad of cards, try and focus it and refine it down. 
add in your lands, so now you know what cards you have and what colours you need. It gives you an idea of how many lands to add. Then play and refine. And that is the best way to build a deck is to play and refine. Keep testing it, keep trying, keep experimenting. Don't be afraid to change things. Um, write down what you're doing if you want to keep a track of it so you don't lose anything. Or you don't make a, make a mistake in adjusting something and suddenly the deck doesn't work. But yeah, part of the fun of Magic is the whole testing the deck over and over again, making sure it works and really attenuating, uh, attuning it to your playstyle and the way you want to have it. And that all folded neatly inside here. So yes, yeah, so if you're building your decks for the first time, keep this as a good reference on how to do that. So you get several big bundles of cards inside here. So let's get these out. So you have 285 cards in total amongst all these packs here, of which 125 of them are semi-randomized. So you're getting slightly random, uh, slightly random cards, but they're not all completely random. So the Wizards wanted to make sure you had at least certain staple cards. So let's start with the least interesting as of right now one, which is lands, because you always need basic lands to build your decks. And you get loads in here to start with. The uh, You'll find out if you continue to keep playing that you will be inundated with basics, but when you first start out, you do really need them to build those decks. You get 20 of each colour, which should be enough to build a couple of decks, even if they end up sharing colours. It should be enough to at least build a couple of decks, or one of each colour if you want to go that way. Might be a, bit, a little bit short on land on each one, but... Because ideally you want about 23, 24 lands, depending. It always depends on magic. So let's take a look at some of the other packs as well then. So here's your not so randomized pack. So these are cards that they reprint in each of the deck builders toolkits, like the Aegis Angel, Sphinx of Magosi, Nightmare, Shiva and Dragon, and Soul of the Harvest. These are your big staple creatures that epitomize each color. So Aegis Angel, um, Angels being the white creature, Sphinx is for blue, um, Nightmares for black, although black tends to be more zombies and vampires now. Dragons for um, red, and elementals for green, although again, they tend to get more hydras these days. But yeah, so these are your big hitting creatures for each of the colours, and you always get these in here. They're exclusively printed in the deck builders toolkit, but they are legal in standard, because they're printed again here as the 2016 set, so they are fully legal to play in standard, even though they're not in the Kaladesh boosters, etc. So, you get lots of really good cards from across history of magic. Some of them are from Kaladesh, and you can tell by the set symbol here. So that set symbol, I'll bring that right to the camera. That set symbol means Kaladesh, whereas that set symbol means magic 2016 which is the starter kit. You also have things like the Shadows Over Innistrad set symbols um, and stuff like that in there, and then Eldritch Moon. And yeah, so you've got a good mix of cards here. Like I said, they are semi-randomized, so your M16 ones aren't, effectively. Everything else is semi-randomized. And what this is, um, is a good collection of cards that do all sorts of different things you're only getting one-offs, and you've got some artifacts here as well, but you're only getting one-offs, but the point is that you're going to build a, you know, a couple of decks to start with and see how you get on with them. So let's open the white banded pack and see what we get in there. So this is your artifacts um, finished off there. Then we go into what we call non-basic lands. So basic lands just tap and produce a colour of manner of the colour that they are, whereas non-basics tend to do something a little bit more. Um, so these enter the battlefield tapped, so you can't use them the turn you play them, but the turn after, when you untap them, these now add to up one of two different colours. So it gives you variety and choice. So you get two of each of these, and there's what's called the enemy and allied pairs. So black and red are allies, because of where they are on the colour wheel. Blue and white are allies, and so on and so forth. So they are friends, and they are called the allied cycle. You then get the enemy cycle, so black and white are enemies, life and death, they're always against each other. And again, you get a cycle of dual colour lands for those as well. Um, which is really cool, it gives you lots of variety to build just about any colour combination deck, 
because you've got access to cards like this right up from the get-go. Um, you don't have to worry too much about the land base because you don't just have to rely on the basic lands, which you do get some more basic lands in there as well. Like I said, to start with, you really need these. Afterwards, you'll be swamped by them. Um, but you always need them when you're first starting out. And if you ever need any more, I'm sure any magic player will be willing to help you out with basic lands. And then we have some more cards here, which again, more semi-randomized cards. And they let you build certain types of decks. Um, so you can see here, we're starting to get some duplicates. I'll just point out the prophetic prisms. But there we go. So these are semi-randomized. So there are different certain archetypes that they want you to try and build into here, but it is entirely up to you how you build these cards. So you can go with like this undead vampires theme from the shows of Innistrad with the black. Um, lots of burn damage, and again a bit more from the shadows there. Um, for red, blue is just your typical sort of controlling, counterspelling, green is your big creatures, um, that sort of thing. But it is entirely up to you how you do build your deck out of the cards you get. You do have four prophetic prisms as well, which are two mana artifacts. So these just come down as a permanent and stay in play. They're not a creature, so it can't be attacked or anything. Um, and when they enter the battlefield, you get to draw a card, and you can pay one and tap it to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. What this allows you to do is effectively filter your mana, so you can have a planes in play, tap it to produce a mana, tap the prophetic prism, and then turn that into a black, or red, or green, or any other color of your choice. So it allows you to change them. It means you can do what's called a splash. So you can make like a white black deck, and then put in a couple of red or blue cards or something like that, like one different color. Put in a handful of them, so you want to put in the big sphinx. Woo, sphinx, or something like that. You can splash that colour, and the prophetic prism means you don't have to worry about running basic lands to that colour unless you want to guarantee being able to play it. And stuff like that. There is so much you can do. The world of magic is incredibly versatile. So let's just quickly open these boosters. And I'm not going to go through all the cards in them. I'm just going to point out anything that is interesting, which will most likely be the dual-faced cards with this set. So... Ooh, Relentless Dead. Cool. And Convicted Killer. So, I'm going to flick this over and you can see already, it's a double face card. So, the double face cards was in the original Innistrad and now Shadows over Innistrad and Aldrich Moon as well. So they start on one side and then they'll have a condition on them. So the for this card, at the beginning of each upkeep, if no spells were cast, last turn transform it so no one was watching. It turns into the Branded Howler. So it becomes a big nasty werewolf that's 4-4. At the beginning of each upkeep, if a player casts two or more spells, it instead transforms back to a 2-2 Convicted Killer. And that was one of the big draws of the Shadows Over in Strad and Eldritch Moon was these dual-faced cards. So um, make sure if you're going to use these, you do either you play with sleeves that you can't see through, or you do get what they call a proxy card at the back. So you tick which one it is you've got. So in this case, Convicted Killer. So you tick Convicted Killer or blank out the other ones. And there's basically some way to make sure it can't be mistaken for being a different card. And instead you put that in your deck because it's got a normal magic back. And when you play it, you're going to get this card from the side and sort of lie it on top of it. Uh, and the rare we got from the pack. Oh, it's a mythic rare. You can tell by the color. So... Common is black, uncommon is silver, rare is gold, mythic rare is like a red, um, sort of like a red golden-y colour. Um, and mythic rares are the, the highest rarity you can get. So it's a double black card, it's a creature zombie with two power and two toughness. Menace, so uh, it can't be blocked except by two or more creatures, so things have to gang up against it because it's terrifying to look at. When it dies, you can pay one black mana to return it to your hand. That's useful. It's very relentless dead. It's not dying. And when it dies, you can pay X amount of mana. So this is any amount of mana you want to pay into it. 
to return another target zombie creature card with converted mana cost X from your graveyard to the battlefield. So if you, for this first X, if you pay 4, you can return a card with converted mana cost 4 from your graveyard to the battlefield. And converted mana cost is the total amount of mana, so the converted mana cost of this would be 2. The converted mana cost of that would be 2. That is 3 total. That converted mana cost is 4 total, for examples. So yeah, it's quite a cool card if you're building a, a zombie deck out of the cards you've got in here. So let's have a look at the Eldritch Moon Booster. Let's see what we get in here. So, like I said, I'm not going to spend too long going through every single card. As you can see, that's a lot of red in here. Um, makes some really cool red decks. Spirit of the Hunt, Lone Rider. Oh, and a Primal Druid in foil. It's always quite nice to get foil cards. So there's always a chance of getting a foil of all the different cards in the set. They don't have alternative artwork, but they're just nice and foily. Nice and shiny. Nice way to bling up the collection. Um, and we have here the Spirit of the Hunt. So it's a Wolf Spirit, 3 mana, 3-3, three, three, with a Flash. Now, Flash means you can play it any time you can play an instant. So you can play this in your opponent's turn, for example. And when it enters the battlefield, each of the creature you control that's a wolf, or werewolf, so that's the subtypes here, gets plus zero power, plus three toughness until end of turn. So it's a really good way to um, bolster to bolster your guys um, if you've made like a werewolf wolf deck, which is very doable, it shows over here in the thread. An Aldrich Moon. Um, so we're on to a Kaladesh booster here. Again, if you're more interested in Kaladesh, feel free to check out my Planeswalker video or my unboxing video. Now we have here Wildest Dreams. So this is XX and green. And you get to return X target cards from your graveyard to your hand. Exile Wildest Dreams. So X and X, you essentially have to pay a mirror amount. So return X target cards from your graveyard to your hand. If you want to return two cards, you'd have to pay two and two, so four total. If you wanted to return three cards, you'd have to pay three and three, so six total. So the more you want to return, the more expensive it is. Also, when you play it, you have to exile the card itself afterwards, and this is to stop you from getting it back and just constantly playing <laughs> Wildest Dreams and constantly returning cards from your graveyard to your hand. And then on to our second Kaladesh booster. Just going to flick through. Go back to the rare... So we have a concealed courtyard. Oh, we've got a mind rotting foil. Very pretty. Um, so concealed courtyard, it's very similar to these ones. In fact, we've almost got a perfect example. So Forsaken Sanctuary is uh, enters the battlefield tapped, produces a white or black. Concealed courtyard is what they call a fast land. So it enters the battlefield tapped, same as Forsaken Sanctuary, unless you control two or fewer other lands. So this is your third first, second, or third land you play, it doesn't enter tapped, and then gives you access to black or white as well. So they call it fast lands because they have to be played fast, you play them early, otherwise they're exactly the same as playing these guys. But it gives you access to these colours at no real downside at the early game. So, yeah, they're quite cool and quite useful to have. So that's all the cards we've opened from our Deck Builders Toolkit. As you can see inside, it's a good sturdy storage box. You do get this spacer that comes inside of it. There's not really much use for it. I mean, maybe to start with when you don't have a huge amount of cards, keep it in there just to stop the cards rocking and rattling and falling over, over which could damage them. But other than that, once you've uh, filled it with cards, which I'm sure won't take too long, take it out and just keep it as a separate storage box. So yeah, so there we go. That is everything you get in the Kaladesh Deck Builders Toolkits. It's plenty to make at least two decks, maybe pushing it, you could do three or four decks from it as well. There's certain themes that the set does want to go you toward, uh, gear you towards, so just have a look through the cards and you can sort of start to get a feel towards it. But it's entirely up to you what you do build from it at the end of the day. They are your cards, your deck, and your own personal taste and touch to them. As long as you have fun, that is all that matters in this game. So there we go. That is everything. So if you have any com comments or questions, feel free to ask them below. Remember, all the cards you've seen here today can be bought and sold on our website as individual cards on bigorbitcards.co.uk. So go and check that out if you're after a couple more replacement cards. Um, other than that, I hope you've enjoyed watching. Uh, check out my Planeswalker, video, uh, Planeswalker deck videos for Kaladesh as well if you want to see what another step is on the introductory guide to magic. Other than that, 
I'll see you next time. Bye.